Oh, didn't see you there. Now, I know why you're here. You just watch Gundam Hathaway's Flash on Netflix and you're like, well, okay, what Gundam do I have to watch next? And you're looking at all these different Gundam series and you just confused because that shit more piled up than what happened at the 2021 Tour de France. Well, boys, you are in luck because your boy been following the Gundam franchise for the past 20 years. So sit back, relax, as I introduce you to the first ever anime series I've ever watched, Mobile Gundam. Let's fucking go! Okay, just FYI, this list excludes all live actions, compilation films, Gundam SD, Gundam Build Fighter, and all of these other shitty Gundam shows. Cause surprise surprise, there actually is a lot of shitty Gundam shows. And for the people like, yo Tony, I want to get in this f***ing robot, just give me a condensed list of what to watch next. I got you. Just skip to this timestamp. Other than that, put on your emo edgy teenager character on and let's go check out some different Gundam worlds. So the first series I want to cover are the standalone series. These series are not really attached to any timeline and could be watched independently. And so we're coming in hot with Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans or IBO for short. Honestly, for fans that are new to the Gundam universe, this is a series I highly recommend. Especially for the fans that enjoyed this past season's 86, this is the perfect series to pivot to. IBO follows the struggle between the suppressed residents of Mars and the incredibly powerful Galahorn, as Mizazuki, Orga, and the rest of the children soldiers of the 3rd Army Division helps lead the aristocrat Kudia Eins Bernstein to Mother Earth, they come across the lost technology of the Calamity War, which ended over 300 years ago. You got badass characters, dope Gundam designs, and some fine ass babes? You cannot go wrong with IBO, y'all. Next standalone series to check out is Mobile Suit Fighter G Gundam. This series is for those that love their, you know, typical kung fu fights and the shonen jump battle royales. It's kind of different in the sense that it's not like a full blown war like your typical Gundam series. Gundam Fighter G is set where all things related to war and politics is settled through a Gundam fight. All I'm going to say is that the English dub is gold. You may have those silver feet, but I've got these gold fingers! Oh shit. Hopefully I can master the golden finger when I'm in the bedroom with the future wifey. Next standalone series is After War Gundam X. Honestly, this series is extremely underrated and not talked about enough. Actually, this series was so underrated that it actually got axed. But what I really appreciated about Gundam X was that it took a refreshing take on the generic Gundam story. With an apocalyptic backdrop, it tackles the question of if there was never a Gundam pilot like Amuro Ray saving the world, what would the world look like? War would have dragged on and the military would be dropping space colonies on Earth like me taking a dump after a 5 hour all you can eat Korean barbecue session. Regardless, if you like anime or the mech genre, this series is a true gem. The last standalone series I want to shed light on is Turn A Gundam. I do want to caveat that if you're not familiar with Gundam or never watched any other UC Gundam series, Turn A Gundam is not really a typical place to start. And I do want to keep it a buck with y'all. I actually dropped this series midway because I couldn't really connect on multiple levels. Maybe it's because the main Gundam in this series looks like he's about to engage in a Mexican standoff in Red Dead Redemption. One thing that really stood out to me though is that the art of the series gave off a Ghibli vibe, which is always a good thing. It's because of the clothing of the characters and the different nature backdrops to the early 20th century technology that it really gives off that Ghibli vibe. So this is the list of all the standalone series of Gundam you guys should definitely check out. You don't need to watch any prequels, sequels, or OVAs to get into any of these series. Uh, apart from Turn A, of course. But y'all, let's keep it moving. The next timeline I want to dive into is After Colony Timeline, or AC for short. 
You got Mobile Suit Gundam Wing set in AC-195 and Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, which is the movie sequel to Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing will honestly always hold a near part of my heart because this is the series that got my generation into Gundam. You would run home from school, turn on that Toonami, and while you watch this amazing series of Gundam Wing, you'll be building that one 144 scale HG Wing Gundam. Damn, those were good times. And while there was a lot of issues with the plot, I'm never going to forget the savagery of my Chad boy hero. But why? I'll kill you. Iconic. And not to flex on y'all, I also have an anime cell of Duo, one of the main characters of the series. That just goes to show you how much I love Gundam Wing. And man, <laughs> let's talk about the movie Endless Waltz, which is in a whole league of its own. I mean, when they play Two Mix's last impression as Hiro and the boys are flying down to Earth in their mobile suits, sheesh. And I don't want to ruin it, but the last scene of this movie, that shit takes me straight to my childhood, y'all. Hands down, top anime Christmas movie, y'all. No argument there. Well, if we're talking about nostalgia, we have to talk about the Cosmic Era timeline, which consists of Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, set in CE-71, and Gundam Seed Destiny, set in CE-73-74. to While all the North Americans of my generation got introduced to Gundam through Gundam Wing, my Asian brothers got introduced to Gundam through Gundam Seed. Now Gundam Seed is a mixed bag of reactions. On one hand, you got one of the most adored Gundam models of all time, the Strike Freedom Gundam. And on the other hand, you got one of the most hated Gundam characters of all time, Flay. Yo, that sex scene though. Sunrise, y'all be wildin' with that one. So to sum up Gundam Seed, it's Jesus Yamato, NTR, beautiful Gundams, and some Delta Macross singing. Now, Seed Destiny is the direct sequel to Seed, and I'm just gonna say it's kind of wasted potential. You get introduced to new characters, but they pretty much get sidelined when Jesus Yamato enters the chat. The only reason I'm not completely disregarding the series is that there was this one powerful scene in Destiny that legitimately made me cry. That shit hit me like you're lying in April, so I approve Sunrise. In the Cosmic Era timeline, there's also one OVA series called CE-73 Stargazer, which takes place right after episode 12 of Destiny. To be honest, it's been 5 years since I've watched it, so I largely forgot large parts of it, but all I know is that it was fairly decent, and you should for sure check it out if you want to get more into the Cosmic Era lore. Next up, we're gonna get into the Anno Domino timeline. You got Gundam 00, which takes place in AD 237 and 238. And you got Gundam 00, the movie, which is Awakening of the Trail Blazer, which is set in 2314. Now, this series is also another one that I recommend to all new Gundam fans, cause it's just solid all around. You get the solid cast, solid art, and finally solid story. And it also has one of my most favorite Gundam designs of all time, the Exia and the Double O Riser. Man, I remember building the Double O Riser in high school, and it was such a good time. Yeah, but I don't, I don't really have nothing more to say about the series other than it's a solid 8 for me, and you gotta check it out. Okay, uh, now we about to get into the big boy timeline. The timeline that started it all for the Gundam franchise. And hands down, in my humble opinion, the best timeline, which is Universal Century, or UC for short. Alright, let's go! First up, you got Gundam The Origin, set in UC, 0068, 0071, and 0078. This OVA series dives into the origin story of one of my most favorite Gundam characters of all time, Char Asnabol. The OG, the Red Comet. Caspel Ram Dai Kun, the originator of the masked villain. Wow. 
Bro, see my man zooming through space in that red Zaku in full 1080p glory? Ooh, it gonna make a grown man cry. Following the origin series, you got the OG to the OG, the 1979 series Mobile Suit Gundam. I mean, this series is what set the tone for the next 40 years of Gundam glory, and all Gundam fans should at least watch the series once. The animation is pretty dated though, cause this series did as dropped when my father was in elementary school. But still, this is a very important part of history, and really, this is what turned it around for the mecha genre. One thing to also note is that many Gundam series falls under the One Year War, covered off in the original Gundam series which is set from UC0079 to UC0080. In that feigned, which also takes place in UC0079, is Miss Igloo, where the last episode ends off after episode 25 of the original show. To be honest, watching this anime was like watching a Halo 3 cutscene. I have never seen some janky ass 3D animation in my life. I think this is where X-Arms got its inspiration. You could honestly skip Miss Igaloo, but do not skip the series 8th MS Team, which takes place during episode 12 of Mobile Suit Gundam. I love this series cause it embodies that grimy tone of Gundam warfare. This series is legitly on most Gundam fans top 5. You got the distinctive art style, the Vietnam War-esque backdrop, the memorable voice acting, chef kisses all around folks. I will never ever forget the Gundam model RX-79 with that huge ass backpack carrying a whole ass weapon arsenal. As a kid, I always thought that Gundam design was sick as hell. And hey, talking about childhood shows, we also need to talk about the tragedy series Gundam 0080 War in Pocket. No exaggeration, this series is on my top 3 and I don't even know where to start. 0080 War in Pocket really dives into the theme of war. Many times people are really idealistic when it comes to their view on war and especially with kids they be like oh shit a Gundam that's sick. But what happens when you start forming relationships with the actual soldiers of both sides of the war? All I'm going to tell you is you about to ride the field train with this one. Okay next up you got Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Season 1 which is set in 0079 and Thunderbolt Season 2 which takes place in 0080. I'm gonna just play this one meme to encapsulate this whole show. I say something. You like jazz? <gasps> <laughs> okay sorry I had to do that. And Gundam fans are going to crucify me for saying this, but Thunderbolt is the modern version of War in Pocket. It really dives into the concept of humanizing the enemy, which is a key pillar of War in Pocket. One thing I also love about the series is that it's focused on disabled soldiers, which is something you typically don't see in Gundam series. But honestly, what was the deal setter for me was of course the jazz OSTs of the series. I used to spin that Thunderbolt jazz album on Spotify on the daily. I mean, who doesn't want to see two huge ass robots destroying each other while you got some of that A5 Wagyu quality jazz blaring in the background? And I'm also going to say, Bianca Carlisle, mommy, let me have your number. Okay, I had to holler one time cause Bianca is a bad ass. All pun intended. Next up you got Gundam 0083, Stardust Memory. I love everything about this series. The Gundam designs, the art, the music. I just fucking hate the female lead, Nina. I straight up want to Amuro bitch slap her. Like Jesus, I've never seen anybody whine that much in my life. If you can't stand annoying girl characters like this, I would just skip this series altogether. Next up you got UC0087 Zeta Gundam and UC0088 Double Zeta. And for Zeta Gundam, I got two words for you. Fuck Titans. Zeta is pretty much a direct sequel to the original series, so you get to see a more older version of iconic characters like Char and Amuro. And really the reason why I love Zeta so much is that my favorite mobile suit designs are all up in here. You got the dark MK2, the blinged out Kyaku Shiki, 
the Super Gundam, and of course the Zeta Gundam. If you want to take a deeper look into the Zeta lore, I would also check out Double Zeta, but honestly speaking, you can skip that series altogether. Next up, you got the movie Shars Counterattack, set in UC0093, and you can imagine what this show is about. It's Shars' final counterattack against the universe. It's really the closing act between the age-old rivalry between Char and Amuro. And because I love Char as a character, this series will always hold an important part in my heart. Next up, you got Gundam Unicorn, set in UC0096. This series follows up several years after Char's counterattack and it focuses on 16-year-old Vanagar Lynx. He ends up piloting the Gundam Unicorn to help defend humankind against Char's Neo Zeon soldiers. The highlight of the show is the Transforming Unicorn Gundam. You see Transforming Gundam throughout different Gundam series, but there's just something that hits different with the Unicorn's transformation. And fun fact, yo boy actually took a picture in front of the 101 scale replica of the Gundam Unicorn in Tokyo and it was easily one of the highlights of my Japan trip. And now, we come across Gundam Hathaway's Flash, a direct sequel to Char's Counter-Attack and easily one of the most beautifully animated Gundam series. Just seeing what Sunrise was able to do in terms of combining 2D and 3D animation is absolutely breathtaking. It just takes you in a full circle experience in terms of the past 40 plus years of Sunrise animation and Gundam storytelling. I honestly can't wait for the last two movies to come out and I hope they really dive into the character backstory like Gigi and Hathaway. The last two series I want to highlight is UC0123 Gundam F91 and UC153 Victory Gundam. I never watched Victory Gundam so I can't say much about that series but F91 Gundam is pretty dope. If you love the vintage Akira type animation, you will really like the series. Now taking a quick zoom back, here are all the different UC Gundam series. I grayed out certain series that I feel like you can skip without losing out on the Gundam experience. Now, I know what y'all are thinking, Tony, I don't have time to watch 500 episodes of Gundam and I can't do that 480p. Well, worry not my friends, because as I alluded to earlier in the video, I want to recommend 5 different series you should watch after Hathaway's Flash or if you're just starting off as a new Gundam fan. Those series would be, and in no particular order, number 1, Gundam Double O, number 2, Gundam Origins, number 3, Gundam IBO, number 4, Gundam Unicorn, and lastly, Gundam Thunderbolt. These are all really good places to start your Gundam experience. And really, I can't wait all of y'all until you start your Gundam journey. As you can tell from this whole video, I love Gundam and it's something that I've been following since I was like 4. Many people think Gundam is a very generic series of, you know, like an emo, edgy teen miraculously coming across a state of an art Gundam robot and they miraculously know how to pilot it and end up saving the whole universe while finding a dude in some mask. Well, to a certain degree, it might follow that storyline, but I believe it's something much more. And I hope while you guys go through all these different Gundam series, spanning across 40 years of storytelling, I hope you'll pick up on that Gundam magic. Welcome all you new Gundam fans, I hope to see all y'all at the 60th anniversary. Thank you guys for stopping by, this is your boy Yee Man, peace out.